<laughs> Hello, everybody out there on YouTube. There, please, let me get... <coughs> Alright, then. Sorry, I'm just waking up. Um, Alright. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Truth For Real Truth Audio. In this video, I will be reading from a script and responding to J.R.S. Barker's two-part video series on Archaeopteryx. It's about 15 minutes long. But instead of going step-by-step step through all of the points that he made, I'm going to basically just be making a case for Archaeopteryx instead. Now, I will link you to the Talk Origins webpage, in which I got most of this information from, over on the side, and in the descriptions. Now, in this video, J.R.S. Barker names the first five evidences that Ar Archaeopteryx has the link between dinosaurs and birds, in which I am going to use today. So, nonetheless, let's get started to started them. FYI, J.R.S. Barker never went in-depth on the first five. Now, the fact that Archaeopteryx... Ah, uh, sorry. Number one. <laughs> now, the, now, the fact that Archaeopteryx has feathers is key for this case, but the fact that it j just has feathers is not much worth it, though. However, in late 1996, a small theropod dinosaur by the, dinosaur by the name of Sinosauropteryx was found with what appear to be feathers preserved along the back, but many creationists object with, well, they may not be feathers, but they, j but may just be scales or something else, then. Proto-archaeopteryx and caudipteryx are not bird are not birds even though they have feathers because the suite of morphological characters they possess mark them as belong as belong to the Manira apteron colorosaur dinosaurs. It appears that the feathers can no longer be used as a unique feature of birds then. Number two, this also was a character of birds, and I'm sorry, I forgot to read the title, Oppo the opposable calyx, or the big toe, I think it is, is it? Let me check my source down here, I have the website open. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, the big toe, the um, opposable, or it's backwards. Number two, this, this also was a character of birds and not of dinosaurs. Although op opposable big toes are found in other groups, they are not, as far as I'm aware, found in dinosaurs. A reverse big toe is found in some dinosaurs, however, and the condition is approached in some theropod dinosaurs. Number three. Uh, now we start getting on onto shaky ground. It used to be thought that the possession of a fur color distinguished bird. Uh, Distinguish birds from dinosaurs. Indeed, up until recently, even even clavicles were few and far between, in which theropod dinosaurs, the suggested closest group up to the birds, and from which the birds evolved. See Ostrom, 1976. I'm going to stop reading the things now. However, it has been found that theropod dinosaurs did indeed have clavicles, and they have been found in several uh, species. Species. Uh, e.g., Segasaurus, Velociraptor, Euparcaria, Ornithosuchus, Saltosuchus, Tisinosuchus. Also, Schur and Ma Madsen, 1996, reported f furculi in a non manoripathon Alisa dinosaur. If you want the correct names instead of me reading them badly, uh, you can go to the website. A commonly cited criticism of this is that most of the theropod dinosaurs listed here post-date RK, uh, which is Archaeopteryx. However, none of these is uh, claimed as the ancestor anyway, and Eupicaria is a Triassic form. The presence of clavicles shows that the character is a feature of theropod dinosaurs, and thus was probably present in early theropods. Number four, pubis elongate and directed backward. This is a feature of birds, but it is also a feature of some theropod dinosaurs. So is dinosaurs, so is not diagnostic of birds. Another neutral character. However, the pubic shafts of Archaeopteryx and Jamasaurus, a group of theropod dinosaurs which are thought to be closely linked to birds, share a plate-like, slightly angled transverse yeah, transverse uh, cross section, which not found, which is not found in any other arch archosaurs. 
Archaeopteryx's reptile features. It's like the second part. Number five. Promaxilla and maxilla are not horn covered. This is posh talk for does not have a bill. The premaxilla does not have a keratinized covering, so Archaeopteryx has no bill. The bill is produced via the process of cornification, which involves the mucus layer of the epider epidermis, uh, and thus its formation is dependent on of jawbone formation. Number six, trunk region vertebra are free. In birds, the trunk vertebrae are always fused, so it's the opposite there. Uh, the Archaeopteryx clearly shows that there's a link, there's a difference there, but there's also many. It's the opposite. Before we were talking about the links between the birds, now we're talking about the links between reptiles. So it's given both sides of the argument. Number seven, bones are pneumatic, i.e., they appear to have air sacs, S-A-C-S, as they do in birds, and in some dinosaurs, e.g., uh, no, sorry. It should be pointed out that previous claims suggesting that bones of R R K or K objects, same thing, were not pneumatic. Was ba this was based on negative evidence, i.e., that the bones do not exhibit pneumatic pores through which the air S A C S sacs. I'm just going to say it that way. Enter the bones, and not bones show, and the bones show none of the plumpness and bulges which characteri characterize the pneumatic bones of modern birds. Brit et al., 1998. Found evidence for the presence of pneumatic bones in Archaeopteryx. Here we re-examine two spe specimens of Archaeopteryx. These specimens show evidence of vertebral pneumatic pneumati pneumaticity in the curvical and anterior thoracic vertebra, thus confirming the phylogenetic continuity between the pneumatic systems of non AVL and theropods and living birds. Number eight, public shafts with a plate like and slightly angled transverse cross section. A character shared with dromosaurs but not with other dinosaurs or birds. So you see the difference there. Nine. So, number nine. Number nine. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Cerebral hemispheres elongate. Slender and cere cerebellum is situated behind the midbrain and doesn't overlap it from behind or press down on it. This, again, is, reptil is a reptilian feature. In birds and cerebral hemispheres are stout. Cerebellum is not... The cerebellum is so much enlarged that it spreads forwards over the midbrain and compresses it downwards. Thus, the shape of the brain is not like that of modern birds, but rather an intermediate stage between dinosaurs and birds. There you go. Number nine is very, uh, is very strong. Number ten, neck attaches to skull, the neck attaches to the skull from the rear, as in dinosaurs, not from below, as in modern birds. Okay, sorry. The site of neck attachment from below is characteristic in birds. Archaeopteryx does not have this character, but is the same as theropod. Dinosaurs. Notice that the coelosaurian-like neck extended back from the rear of the skull in Archaeopteryx, as it does in co coelosaurus theropod dinosaurs, which is, yes, 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 rather than from beneath as in later birds. Skull and brain of Arche is basically reptilian and is not totally bird-like, contrary to the certain creationist claim. Now, these are only 10 of the 23 arguments for Archaeopteryx, which I would read, would read, but I think it would just be, just be easier if you go and read over them yourself, rather than me waste megabytes on my computer. Thank you, and I hope you all have a nice day, folks. Alright, that's my script goodbye, but I'm going to actually say goodbye in a right way. Um... If you really think that uh, this was too scripted, you can't understand uh, exactly what I was saying, please go to the webpage over in the description. You can read over not only these ten, but the rest, the next ten, and then three more. Twenty-three arguments for Archaeopteryx. If that's really not enough, I don't know what to say. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day, folks.